So we are on to the chapter on gases. We want to start talking about gases and the behavior of gases and what we can do with that information. How can we study a system and how does studying gas, the gas phase specifically, help us better understand that system? So the focus of chapter six, or the gas laws chapter, I want you to think about what causes pressure. Why is, what is the reason we have pressure in the first place? What's the definition of pressure and how does this factor into gases? You're going to look at Boyle's law, Charles's law, Anton's law, Avogadro's law. You should be able to determine density, molar mass, or identity of an unknown gas. Do gas stoichiometry calculations. Do calculations with Dalton's law of partial pressures. Understand and apply the kinetic molecular theory. Understand and apply the definitions of effusion and diffusion and understand the difference between them. And be able to use Van der Waals equation. For module 6a specifically, we're going to start delving into this concept of gas pressure. What is a gas pressure? What causes pressure in the first place? And why do gases often, um, why are gases often reported with respect to their pressure? You need to be able to um, use the following conversion factors. You need to know these conversion factors. One atmosphere is 760 torr, is 760 milliliters of mercury, is 10.1325 pascal, which is equal to 101.325 kilopascal. One millimeter mercury is equal to one torr. You need to remember how to calculate temperature in Kelvin. You're going to do this calculation constantly. We often record temperature in degrees Celsius, but in the calculations we need to use Kelvin. You need to understand how barometers and manometers work. And know that STP, which stands for Standard Temperature and Pressure, represents temperature and pressure at 0 degrees C, or 273.15K, and 1 atmosphere. So as an overview to this chapter, the reason why we study gases in chemistry, the observable properties of gases give us a window into what's happening at our molecular level. If we can understand better what's actually occurring at the molecular level, then we can have a better understanding of the system itself. Gases allow us to do that. So, for example, I want you to think about these questions as we go through this chapter. Why does the pressure of a gas increase when it's compressed? So what I mean by that is, let's say I have a piston with a gas inside. I compress this system. And I've got gas particles in here. Why is the pressure higher when compressed? Why do gases expand when heated? Why does increasing the temperature cause the gases to expand in their area compared to a smaller space at a lower temperature? Why does a gas diffuse through a room? If I spray like a room spray, why can someone smell it across the room? And why don't gases have a fixed shape or volume? At the very beginning of chemistry, we talk about how solids have fixed shape and fixed volume. Liquids have fixed volume, but variable shape. But gases have a variable shape, variable volume. Why? When it comes to pressure, we have four variables that completely describe the state of any gas. Pressure, temperature, volume, and number of moles. Pressure is one of the most common things we're going to talk about with a gas. We're going to say the gas at this pressure, the gas at this temperature, the gas in this volume, but we've talked about pressure a lot. Pressure has a lot of units. We can report this in atmosphere, torr, millimeters of mercury, pascal, kilopascal. There's others. This is what you're responsible for, and you need to be able to convert between these units. Temperature, you're going to report this most often in Kelvin. Volume, most often in liters. And number of moles, lowercase n. Pressure is defined as the force over an area. What I mean by that is if I have a system of gas particles, piston on top, these gas particles in here are going to apply pressure are applying pressure to this system. So they're applying pressure here. How much pressure? 
so we can see them a little bit better. Gas particles in here, we could even have a mixture, are applying pressure um, overall. The pressure is due to the force over an area. Gas particles are moving constantly. If something's in the gas phase, it has the highest energy, which means they are just constant movement. And they're bouncing off the walls, they're bouncing off each other. That's creating a force applied over an area, which is pressure. The SI unit of force is N, capital N, and the SI unit of area is meters squared. So one Pascal, PA is Pascal, which is my SI unit for pressure, is equal to one Newton per meter squared. And for Newton, one Pascal is equal to one Newton per meter squared. But one Pascal is a very, very small unit. One atmosphere is equal to 101,325 kilopascals. One atmosphere is also equal to 101.325 kilopascals. So transfer into kilo, divide by 1,000. It's also equal to 760 millimeters of mercury and 760 tor. So lots of pascals make up one atmosphere. To put it in perspective, the atmospheric pressure around us is often like, uh, I don't know right the second. <laughs> it depends what the weather and the changes, but normally I'll see it for like 745 millimeters of mercury, 750 millimeters of mercury, something like that in our area. So, you know, just short of one atmosphere, lots of pascals. And then of course, because 760 millimeters of mercury and 760 tor all both equal one atmosphere. One millimeter mercury also equals one tor. You are responsible for these units. You do need to know how to convert between them. So your gas phase. Gases at room temperature are usually a result of covalent bonding in compounds. They have no definite shape, no definite volume. The result of simultaneous collisions of billions of gas particles within an object is your for force per unit area. A vacuum, we sometimes will talk about putting things in a vacuum, not like a vacuum like cleaning your house, but like a vacuum on an instrument, we'll say we're put, putting it under vacuum. A vacuum is the absence of any of these collisions. No collisions are happening. Atmospheric pressure, let's say we live at the bottom of an ocean of air, higher up on the mountain, the pressure is lower. Deep in the valley, the pressure is higher. So again, the gas molecules themselves are constantly moving. When they hit the surface, they apply a force. The collisions with the surfaces create the pressure that the gas is being reported for. Higher up, lower pressure. Deeper down, higher pressure. You are responsible for STP. We call this STP. It stands for standard temperature and pressure. Your standard pressure is 101.325 kilopascals or one atmosphere. And this is an exact conversion, which means it does not limit sig figs. It's also exactly equal to 760 millimeters of mercury and 760 tor, so again, does not limit sig figs. 14.7 PSI. You need to know these. Okay, we're going to do calculations where I just say it's under STP. You need to know what STP means. And then standard temperature, 0 degrees C, or 273.15 K. Technically, we would re report this with more sig figs. We would say 0, 0.00 degrees C which converts to 273.15K. One way we can measure it, or um, in this section, we're actually talking about barometers and manometers. Barometers and manometers are used to actually measure pressure. It's how we measure the atmospheric pressure. A barometer is red. You can go onto the weather app and see what the atmospheric pressure is for that day. And it's red through a barometer. Basically, barometer has a height, this tube that is filled with liquid mercury. Remember mercury? 
the one metal that's a liquid on the periodic table at room temperature. And there's mercury in the well down here. The force of mercury is pushing down on here, but the force of atmosphere is pushing here. If this pushes up higher, the atmosphere is pushing harder than the mercury is. We can measure where on this scale the mercury resides to figure out what the atmospheric pressure is that day. So it's all about the difference in the number here to see how much is the atmosphere pushing down, how much is the mercury rising up. Manometers work in a similar fashion. So again, barometers, we've got your atmospheric pressure pushing down on the mercury, pushing this up. Mercury is pushing down. There's a vacuum at the top of this tube, and the scale indicates the pressure of the air. At one atmosphere, the height on a barometer is 760 millimeters of mercury. Now we live in the US, so we measure this in inches, but we can convert from inches to millimeters. Manometers work in a similar fashion. A manometer is a U-shaped tube where one side we connect to the pressure of the system we're trying to measure. The other side is open to atmosphere. And the height difference here can tell us what the pressure is of the system being measured. In this case, the pressure of the gas is greater than the pressure of atmosphere. We see that the pressure of the gas is greater because the height is a lot lower on this side, which means it's pushing down really, really hard on this side, and it's pushing all of this up here. The atmosphere is not pushing as hard, therefore the atmospheric pressure in this example is lower than the pressure of the gas being measured. Let's do a couple of calculations so you can see how this is applied. If water, which has a density of one gram per centimeter cubed, were used as the liquid in a barometer instead of mercury, which has a density of 13.6 grams per centimeter cubed, how would the height of the liquid compare to one atmosphere of pressure? So basically, the height, we use mercury because it's really, really dense. The height equal to 13.6 grams, per one centimeter cubed and times this by 760 millimeters. Now, why am I doing it like this? It's because if water was one gram per centimeter, mercury is 13.6 times denser than water, which means it would take 13.6 times the height of the mercury to reach what the water would do. This would give me 10336 millimeters. So I'm not so worried about the units right here. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to take this 13.6 and see how much higher it would have to go to account for the water. In millimeters, this would be 10,336 um, millimeters, which would be 10.34 meters. Basically, if water were used... the barometer would have to be 10.34 meters compared to using mercury. So like if a barometer with mercury was one meter, one meter with mercury, it would be 10.34 meters with water. A lot bigger. So we use mercury, because mercury is really, really dense. What is the pressure in a container of a gas connected to a mercury-filled open-ended manometer if the level in the arm open to atmosphere is 15.2 centimeters lower than the arm connected to the container, and if the atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury? What I recommend you do on an example like this is draw a picture. So we've got a flask that's connected, and it's got some kind of gas inside. This is connected to a manometer. that's open end to the atmosphere. It tells me the level in the arm open to atmosphere is 15.2 centimeters lower 
than the arm connected to the container. So this is down here. This is up here. The difference here is 15.2 centimeters. So this is some kind of gas, okay? What this means though, is that the atmospheric pressure is pushing harder than the gas pressure. We can relatively, easy measure, me, relatively easily measure atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure here is 765 millimeters mercury. The atmospheric pressure is greater than the gas pressure. So the pressure of the gas will be equal to the pressure of the atmosphere minus the change in height. If the pressure of the gas was higher, it would be plus that change in height. But here it's minus that change in height. The pressure of my gas, 765 millimeters of mercury, minus 15.2 centimeters, don't let this mess you up, 152 millimeters. Gives me an answer of 613 millimeters of mercury. So what this means, because the arm open to atmosphere is 15.2 centimeters lower than the arm open to the gas, that means the atmosphere is pressing harder on the um, mercury inside the U-shaped tube, inside the manometer, than the gas pressure is. Therefore, atmospheric pressure is higher by 152 millimeters of mercury. Therefore, I can find the pressure of my gas, and it's 613 millimeters of mercury.